Okay, there's uh, six of us so far, and I guess that's pretty good considering it's uh, almost the end of August. I'm sure there's a lot of people fitting in some last-minute summer fun. Uh, hello, I'm Brendan Highland. Welcome to the uh, uh, GLP study group for our RQAP exams. Um, this is session number three. Uh, hopefully you're in the right place. Um, I guess uh, just to start, you should be able to see my slides right now. Can I get a nod? Yeah, great. Uh, and you can hear me, obviously. Uh, that's good. If you can't hear me, then there's something wrong with your speakers, I'm afraid. All right, so um, I guess uh, let's get started. Uh, are you going to work? Yes. Okay. So uh, as I said, we're uh, we're at session three today. So uh, so our topic is uh, inspecting and what to inspect. Um, we're going to uh, uh, try and fill up an hour here. Uh, our First of all, uh, is anyone joining these sessions for the first time? Uh, can I get a raised hand or an emoji or a thumbs up? Anybody here for the first time? No. Okay. Well, that's great. So everybody's uh, everybody's at least seen one of the uh, earlier sessions. I'm going to uh, breeze through a few uh, a few things that you've definitely seen before then, but I think uh, they're just worth uh, uh, worth really envisioning what's this uh, what what the exam is going to be like. So uh, we'll we will do a little bit of a repeat before we get into some discussions. Um, did uh, anyone do their uh, homework and come prepared with questions at all? Again, your favorite uh, uh, hand raise or anything like that? No? Okay. Well, remember, uh, we, this, these always uh, benefit you the most if you, uh, if you can participate a little bit. So we've got some uh, pre-prepared questions. We've got lots of opportunity for discussion today. And of course, uh, uh, you have myself and uh, Nina here uh, to... Uh, uh, to help answer any questions that might come up or point you in the right uh, uh, right direction um, otherwise. All right. Another question for you. Has anybody taken the practice exam yet? I know that's that's a little bit of a of a a, a time investment. Oh, we have somebody in the in some something going on in the chat? Not yet, right. And Ashton, you say you have. Okay, great. That's good. Yeah, definitely it's free this year, right? So uh, so it's definitely uh, worthwhile uh, checking that out. Uh, you'll get some idea at least of, uh, of, of how the how the time uh, constraints may have. Um, yeah, Han, thank you. Uh, that's great. Okay, good, good. We're getting prepared. Well, okay. Uh, as I said, I think it's really great to try and visualize uh, how this exam is going to go. Right? We've uh, we've we've learned over the years from uh, uh, several authors that uh, that that you're uh, visualizing uh, your 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 performance can actually enhance your performance. So uh, so let's let's look at a a couple of things about the exam writing logistics and uh, and things. Right. So 165 multiple choice questions, 15 aren't scored. It's three and a half hours, right? So um, while the exam is really uh, uh, um, obviously the content, it's testing, um, you know, what you know about the, the regulations itself. It's also challenging some other aspects like your physical ability for to, to, to be able to sit and concentrate that long, right? So it's a good idea to practice some of those other uh, uh, challenging things. Uh, also, you only get about 1.5 minutes per question. And some of these questions are long, some of them are really short. So having a strategy going in, is uh, is going to be key for uh, being able to do this um, without maybe uh, uh, having your eyeball bleed or something. Um, so 
uh, there's uh, there for extra cost. There's some uh, uh, sp special testing uh, formats for uh, candidates who uh, uh, English is not their first language, and the pra practice exam is now free. Right, so we encourage you to take it. Though uh, a, a few of you have already done so. The exam covers FDA, EPA, OECD, GLPs, and 24, 21 CFR Part 11 as well. Okay. Um, also, there's, of course, the uh, the consensus documents from the GLPs. I encourage you to take a look at the uh, at the at the testers package if you have not already. That really lists uh, everything that you should be uh, taking a look at. Um, we've we've highlighted these uh, three consensus documents in particular. Uh, that's the study director one, the multi-site study one, and the computerized systems one. Uh, also note that the multi-site studies one from the OECD actually uh, uh, brings out requirements uh, that the OECD impose that aren't imposed in the in the US versions of the GLPs, but are quite often uh, used as best practices there. So uh, it's worth, if you have only worked in the FDA stuff, really look at that multi-site study uh, uh, document, please. Okay, so read through all the material, know the regulations, Preambles will help you understand the expected interpretation and answer the questions based on the most conservative approach, right? So this might differ from what you do at your company, but we're going to reiterate over and over again. You're writing this answer from the approach that it's somebody who's really, really focused on what the regulations or the guidances say and applies them as conservatively as possible. Uh, sometimes it'll look like there might be gray areas in the answers. Uh, but uh, so if that's the case, then look for the one that's the most conservative uh, approach. Of course, as long as as some of the wording in that answer doesn't cancel itself out by using something that doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, lots of questions, not a lot of extra time, right? So you need a strategy. If you saw Melanie Willis's uh, um, uh, great uh, presentation on the uh, on the psychology of uh, exam testing, um, you know, you you'll know. Probably you'll you'll have thought a little bit about your uh, what your learning method, your best learning method is, and also you'll probably have come up, come up with a strategy such as going through all the questions multiple times. The first time hitting all the quickest and most obvious ones, right, and then going back and uh, and 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 seeing them. The uh, format of the test allows you to only go through questions you haven't asked yet, right, and uh, so that it really is safe to skip it and go back later as long as you go through really quickly the first time. So watch your time. After the first hour, you should be through 50 to 55 questions, right? So pace yourself. And if you're unsure, guess, a, guess because a wrong answer uh, is the same as a no answer. You don't get penalized for wrong answers, right? But, uh, but you know, uh, if you are, don't be afraid to, uh, to also leave an answer blank to come back to it, right? So. Watch for keywords. These are going to give you a best guess as to whether it's FDA, OECD, or EPA, right? So words such as protocol, control article, study study plan. Um, you know, if there's any kind of reference to pesticides, you know it's probably EPA or 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 OECD. Um, if it's uh, if it talks about multi-site words used in multi-site like test site, uh, principal investigator, those are specific terms. Div find in the OECDs and not in any of the others. So that is a good sign that you're going to, uh, you're going to be referring to the OECDs in your answer, right? And apply logic. Most questions have two answers that are clearly incorrect. This is the, the we, we cannot emphasize this more. You're going to be able to either uh, il either eliminate candidates or uh, or decide that a candidate is definitely right by the wording that they uh, that they have. 
All right. So any questions before we move on to uh, to some of the, the the topics of today, today's uh, meeting? Yes. Um, so, for example, if I have multiple questions that I did not answer early on, is the program, how is the program when I come back? How do I know which question have I missed so I can re, you know, redo it? Again, like for example, I have more than uh, 15 questions that I skipped early on. How is the program, it just come back and, and, and prompt me to say, hey, question number 15, you have an answer. And it right. just go on, go on. Can so you tell the, me how is that work? I haven't seen the exact format. It's been a number of years since, uh, since, since I ran uh, through the exam. Uh, however, when I did it, uh, it just it just allowed me to go back and just scroll through all the unanswered uh, questions. I'm sure it's going to be something similar now, where you're going to be able to only show the ones that are that haven't been answered or quickly skip through, uh, just run through them. Uh, you, you know, using something like the arrow keys or a mouse button or something. Okay. Okay, uh, but uh, but this is this is very common in these uh, in these types of test setups where you can you can go back and address all the unanswered questions. So uh, so I so don't worry, there will be a way of doing that. All right, you know, after 30, 35 years, haven't been taking any test. <laughs> it kind of worried. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, it is. Uh, again, you know, having that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, you know, in our day to day, uh, most of us, at least in, uh, in 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 QA and regulatory, I mean, we don't have bell ringer style exams, right? We don't have to. Nobody comes up to us and says, "You've got thirty seconds. Answer <laughs> answer these next ten questions." That just doesn't happen in our day to day. So, so you know, this is why we uh, we recommend you know try the uh, practice exam. Set yourself a timer and uh, and just just. You know, if you've got, if you're not sure what kind of strategy to to use, um, you know, just take a portion of the test and how much time that should take you, and then just practice several strategies and see what works for you. You know, you you've you've got the time, and uh, and and we've given you some tools to help you with that. So so uh, so yes, definitely. Um, you know, I found it. I found when I took it way back i found it quite challenging um i mean again this, this speed reading i hadn't uh, i i had not thought to practice reading things quickly and i found it really challenging to read the longest uh longest questions so just having a little bit of a of a you know uh, a practice session where you where you just go through read long ones and just just quickly decide is this too long can i just move on to the next and 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 just giving yourself that kind of uh, practice and strategy you know brenda may i make a recommendation yeah yeah Please. um same as you i took my test a very long time ago um you may want to show up a few minutes early and just ask the moderator you know how do how do I get back to questions that I haven't answered because they probably have an answer for you, just in case you're worried. Yeah, there's also a check-in process too. So, um, I think getting there early to just address all of the logistics of that also, and then like you mentioned, Nina, have time for <clears throat> excuse me, have time for um, you know specific testing questions. I think I had asked a similar question. Um, back in one of the study sessions about being able to skip questions, like if if you could skip a question, if it had an answer attached to it, uh, or I'm sorry, flag a question if you, to come back to it, if you just plopped in, you know, a random guess um, or a slightly educated guess, but then wanted to come back and make sure that you, that I went, you know, through that question again, if you could still skip it. Um, or flag it, I'm sorry, if you could still flag it and come back to it, even if it had an answer attached. So that's going to be something that I plan to ask um, at the testing center. Good. I would also say I, when I just registered last week um, to pick my date, they had really informative videos of like what to expect and putting your stuff in a locker, just little stuff like that. 
Um, I actually thought it was very uh, informative and kind of like surprised at, at like how strict it is. And I did have one other question. Mm. Um, I'm having trouble finding the preambles that are like clear and easy to read. I don't know if I'm completely missing them. It looks like what I'm finding are the original documents from 1970s that have been like scanned. I don't know if there's a, somewhere to find, you know, clear versions that are easy to read. You know, I, I, I remember those were, I read the scanned versions as well. Okay. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm sure there must be a, a direct transcript of everything somewhere. Um, unless somebody has a, uh, has has something at the tips of their fingers. What I'll do, I'm hosting the next session as well. So I'll just uh, uh, mark down a note to myself to see if uh, if if there's something a little clearer. Yeah, some of them were like brown. You could tell they were really the original scan. Like right. Okay. Well, I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> I wasn't sure if SQA had them somewhere or had a link to. You know, in this day and age, I'm sure it must exist somewhere. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, to be honest, I've, I haven't had any reason since studying for the exam to go back to the preambles. So, uh, so yeah, I, I really don't know what the answer is there, but I, I can look into it. <laughs> Thank you. Great. It looks like the versions that I have are also the, um, I mean, I have them printed, but, and I believe there's only two. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> or if some, can someone um, confirm that for me? <laughs> okay. The ones I have are, well, I have them listed as from 1978 and then also 1987. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's also the 1976 preambles. Oh, I don't have that. Correct. I thought there were three versions. I didn't know if I was correct or not. Okay. That's good to know. I'll uh have to hunt that one down too. <laughs> like Brendan said, we'll make a note for ourselves also. Um, and if you guys attend the next several sessions, you know, we should have something to share. Thank you. I just didn't know if it was linked somewhere on SQA and I was missing it. I was just having a hard time finding a clear version to read. You know, it may very well be uh, linked somewhere on SQA. As I said, uh, we rarely have any reason to uh, to go to that particular document. So, uh, uh, you know, so we'll uh, we'll we'll check into it and get back to you on that. OK. All right, so today's topic is uh, inspecting and what to inspect. So what do we inspect, right? We inspect the component laboratories. So that would include the chemistry, histology, pathology, clinical pathology, surgery, microbiology, electron microscopy, and reproduction toxicology laboratories, right, as, as examples. We might also inspect some uh, some non-laboratory sites like field sites and test plots, uh, mesocosms and uh, simulation structures. Uh, does everybody know what a mesocosm is? I I, uh, I had to look that one up because that's not one I've seen before. Um, the, so a mesocosm is a is an is a natural environment where they've 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 sort of tried to control it uh, uh, for for a uh, field study. Um, I hadn't seen that word before. Storage areas, for example, for uh, test control and reference materials, specimen samples, media, feed, embedding, uh, chemicals and reagents, equipment and supplies. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, any kind of uh, temperature so storage requirements, uh, especially for, uh, for specimens and samples, uh, might need to be inspected. Computer facilities and associated controlled procedures under systems, protocols, SOPs, facility records, things like that. Though I, I and uh, and 
data under active collection in each laboratory or site location. So, uh, so here we're talking about inspecting versus auditing. So we might be looking at when we're actually at a la laboratory, we might be looking at some of the uh, the availability and quality of the documents and and whether the forms are being uh, collected and uh, and and kept in a certain uh, way to preclude mix up and, and and that kind of thing so <laughs> while we're inspecting we're also going to be looking at uh, uh some specific things like uh like labeling of uh of 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 chemicals and materials and uh control and reference materials and things like that uh equipment associated with uh with with test system maintenance um so that would include things like rooms, um, test plots and aquaria, and study conduct, uh, equipment maintenance, calibration and validation, archives, including the appropriateness of, of raw data, electronic data, uh, archival storage, retrieval and environmental control, Obviously, we've got requirements for uh, for for retention over a period of time, and to make sure that things are not uh, uh, are are not in danger of uh, of of degradation. Laboratory or field site that participates in a study, including vendors, contractors, or subcontractors. Storage conditions for of test control and reference materials and specimens, data, and samples. Okay. So how about uh so has anybody brought any questions with them about these uh, any of these topics about about the kinds of things that we would inspect? Right. Well, um, let's start with uh, with with an example question here. What differentiates between a, a phase of a study and a test site? So, first of all, you see the word test site there. What does that indicate? We're 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 talking about what kind of GLPs are we talking about here? OECD. No, very OECD. Good. Right. Very good. So what's the difference between a, a phase of a study and a test site? I guess the, the 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 first thing we can look at is the obvious difference between the two, right? A test site sounds like it's a physical location, whereas a phase of a study sounds like it's a, a, a period of time. Yeah, I'm kind of imagining like a as far as phase, because well, I primarily work under the FDA GLPs um, and some EPA, but it's limited. Um, so yeah, phase of a study being, you know, either the histology phase and picking a microtomy or, you know, some other kind of more specific, um, you know, process within the phase that my, my company, you know, is tasked with doing for the study. Right. Is that so... Okay. Any anybody else? Uh, is it that they're associated with two different regulations? The the terms. The terms. Well, so no, I think the so the test site definitely is a is 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 an OECD specific thing. Uh, but but the idea of a phase of a study tends to apply for all the GLPs. I don't. I, I'm. Uh, I'm not aware of a study phase being being uh, specifically defined in any of them, but I can uh, I can I can quickly check here. Okay. 
Yeah, the OECDs definitely use the word phase all over the place. And I that was that uh, um like recently, um, me and my colleague, we were having an issue like trying to find clear direction on um like critical in phase inspections, like process inspections. And it was as if it was only mentioned, I think, like like you said, in OECD or one of them, but another one it was really not touched on. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not including a full review. We just couldn't find it in the time that we were looking for. So I thought that that was a pretty interesting thing to bring up. That might be one of my questions. <laughs> I might make yeah. that just a question. <laughs> Sorry, and you're, you're specifically... Uh... You're specifically talking about phases here, or about uh, or about the definition of what a critical phase to be inspected. Yeah, the critical phases. I see. Right. Yeah, and I think I that's the quite phase often. Of the study is a bit different, but it made me think about critical in phase um, inspections. Right. Which I think that's probably a good question for me because I know, like, generally, it's like, oh, if you have GLP studies. Um, uh, one inspection every three months versus a non-GLP is like once a year, but it's just so much question around. And then it says in intervals that are necessary to, right. you know, monitor the study. So there's just like a lot of leeway with that. And I think that probably will be my question. Right. So it is, it, 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 it so what does a critical phase uh entail i guess if uh, um um yeah so it entails i guess observing the uh, assay or the whatever is being performed like um the surgery or anything animal surgery whatever is being performed to pick a step out of the you know protocol or the plan or method to observe um for accuracy and quality um and th those typically happen for all glp studies and most companies will commit to that process for every study that they have coming in whether it's glp or not glp right just to maintain quality Okay, so just getting back to, uh, I, I think that's a really, that's a great question, um, the critical phases. Um, did you have that, uh, that, that kind of a discussion? I know we went, we went through uh, in session, was it session one, um, was the what to inspect and when, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't think to act at that time and I was at yeah. the first two meetings and okay. it wasn't until I guess last Friday is when I was faced with trying to figure out the best word and we're trying to create a training pro program at my job right. and really dig into the whys and what's and how we determine the a number of inspections were you know sufficient and that's where we hit a roadblock. Right. And so I thought that would be kind of a good thing to explore. I'm not sure okay. if that particularly will come up on the exam, but um, it was something that I was a little bit confused about. So. So I think you're quite right. The uh, the the regulations are not clear about what it considers to be a critical uh, phase of the study. I think that leaves it up to the study director and the QA to uh, to come up with that. And of course, part of the reason for that is that for different types of studies, you're going to have very different uh, types of, uh, of critical phases. Um, for example, an animal study versus a versus a um, versus as an environmental study might be uh, might be very different. Those phases might be completely different. In fact, um, so uh, so that I think that's one of the answers for that. But then, how do you know whether you uh, you you've chosen the correct phases and the and and a good uh, 
length of time in between them. Yeah, like how do you know you've chosen like appropriate intervals? Like if the FDA comes to inspect and it says, well, whatever you feel fit, but they say uh, you only inspected this type of study once a year, I don't think that that's sufficient. Like would you ever run into ah. issue where like do they have so I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I feel like nervous that maybe there's some type of guidance or something that's been written out to like go into more detail that I just haven't like found it yet but my thing would be like you know what do they consider appropriate because you know depending so, on the business you know it could vary right. for sure so that's uh that's that's actually uh that's an interesting point I think that's something new that's coming in that's uh into into some FDA studies uh is the so the OECDs define something called a process-based inspection which the FDA GLPs do not and in the OECDs a process-based inspection is an inspection of something that uh, that I believe would be considered non-critical, but is it, it's inspect it's an inspection of something that is a very repetitive process that you actually inspect on a time period instead of inspecting for every study, um, and that's because it it's a repetitive process, and so as long as you're keeping an eye on that process being compliant then you don't need to inspect it for every study gotcha. can anybody think about how the uh how the oecd or sorry how the fda um how the fda were uh words there uh there uh, how inspections should be done Um, I have 5835, uh, looks like B3 here, at least for the QA unit, or um, it says to inspect each non-clinical laboratory study at intervals adequate to assure the integrity of the study and maintain written and properly signed records of each periodic inspection showing XYZ items that are necessary. So I do think that it is left a little subjective that way. Mm. Um, you know, but it you, does say each study, right? So yes, they do yeah, have an each, expectation each study. Yeah, each study that what, study whatever would be a critical, anything critical to the study should be inspected for every study, right? And that I think uh, that that might be that you're right. There is a still a little bit of leeway, but you need to be able to show right in in the end a lot of these things whenever you see a gray area like this it comes down to well what kind of difficult conversations are you going to open yourself up to with an inspector and how are you going to defend your behavior right and uh, and but again for this exam we want to take the most conservative interpretation possible in our answers yeah, so that interval could be different between, you know, from study to study, but each study will have at least one, right. um, you know, phase, phase inspection, critical phase inspection. However, it's labeled, you know, within your company, I guess, and even, you know, your SOPs should also support um, the decision that's made as well. Right. I think that uh, that for for most common GLP studies, what I've seen is that uh, is that there are basically a pretty standard list of what's considered critical for most studies, uh, with the understanding that you would add very any other study specific critical uh, time points to that list, right? So for example, in an animal study, um, you know, Dosing is always going to be on your list of critical phases, and um, you know you you probably don't want to not witness do not inspect dosing in a uh, you know and same with uh, with dose preparation if that's uh, if that's part of your study. Does that make sense? Anything else that you guys can think about think of uh, as being critical? 
in a GLP study? Um, thank you for bringing it up, um, Brendan. I just wondering, yeah. is there a, um, a critical phase or, 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 for example, like you mentioned earlier, a general critical um, inspection need to be conducted, like for example, uh, dough, dough formulation preparation or, you know, those in the animal. Do you have any, you know, like uh, guidance to to point us or just let us know like this is typically, typically is a critical phase that you need to inspect. Do you have any guideline like that, guidance like that for us to, to see or look at it, to know what they are? Uh, I don't know of anything from uh, from from the FDA. Yeah, right. Nina, have yeah. you have you seen anything like that? I don't believe I've seen any kind of guidelines or guidances that will specifically define mm -hmm. it. It's really up to your test facility management to define and, like Ashton said earlier, within your SOPs, state mm -hmm. what you feel is a critical aspect of each study type. Okay. This is one of those things that falls under industry best practices, I think. And you will find, you know, lots of lots of literature out there. I think if you did a search talking about for a particular kind of study, what you would consider critical phases, I think, but uh, but not nothing in terms of a regulatory guideline that I know of. OK. Um, you know, again, that's that's clearly in the purview of the you know, the study director and the QA when they're planning their uh, inspections. And if you decide to put it into an SOP that every study has these particular critical phases as as as, as minimum, that's something that, that you would decide with your, uh, with in consulta consultation with test facility management, so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think that's very helpful. Uh, Brendan, to answer your, um previous question. Um, I was going to mention report audits. Report audits? Yes, as being a um, considered a critical uh, right. phase of the study, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. I think in the end, I mean, <laughs> rather than listing what the critical phases you uh in terms of you know a guidance listing that i think if the if because you need to prove that the glp study uh meets the requirements of glp right if you didn't do these the you know a critical phase is defined as something that if you didn't do it then how can you show that it's <laughs> that, that the study was conducted uh in compliance with the glps right so if you didn't do a final data audit. If you didn't audit the final report, um, you know, again, there's, there's, uh, I don't believe there's anything specifically saying that QA uh, has to audit the protocol. But at the same time, if you don't audit the protocol, then how do you know that, uh, that, you know, how are you showing that the rest of study conduct met the protocol and that that met GLP requirements, right? So, uh, so a lot of them just sort of fall out of the other regulatory requirements. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Whether you do that in a in a in an inspection or an audit, um, and that's roughly translating to whether you do that in person and watching it or looking over the records afterwards really depends on whether whether by looking over the records you can uh prove that it was done per the glps or not right and there's certain things you can only see in person so yeah so um i have another question for example if um the final report that qa would be audited uh, the final report will QA be will QA have to be responsible to look or audit the entire report, or is it the responsibility of the study director or the QA alone? How uh, how much QA would be input in the final report for the audit? 
That's a that's a very good question. Um, and the answer, like a lot of things, is it depends. So can people think about it as a group? Why don't we start going through? Okay, so what what do you think that that that's going to depend on? And what at minimum should QA be doing in a final report audit? I'll ask a question. Maybe that would help. Okay. How, how does QA ensure that the report is a true and accurate reflection of the raw data? And so then maybe that will help us figure out how much of that report you should be auditing as the auditor. Then QA have to look every single results from the report compared to the raw data to ensure it reflect perhaps the accurate. Right. Perhaps the QA needs to look at every single table uh, result. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there there are many different strategies for doing this, right? Okay. And that might depend on uh, on how you do that. Uh, but uh, but that's that's one way of doing that. There there are all, also other ways, right? You could have the study staff could have a quality control process where they're checking every single data point. And QA could just make sure that that contr quality control process worked. That's how my company is. We do mm -hmm. have a QC, specific, a independent QC group. Um, and then we are checking a percentage of that. <clears throat> All right. So if that's the case, did you put in your audit report that you check like 10% or 20% of the data? No, we kind of how she phrased it, that it's an accurate um, representation of the data. Okay. So going back to our discussion question, we talked about test sites and phases of the study. So how does, and, and, and okay, so let's let's maybe go back to this. So a test site is a location that's different from the test facility where part of the study is is being done, right? So a phase of a study or more than one phase of a study might be done performed at a test site, right? Whereas but you can also have phases of studies done at the test facility and have multiple phases done at this test facility, or then phases done in different places, right? Does that make sense? So the OECD definition of a test site is for a phase of a, where a phase of a study is being done at a different location under uh, under being overseen by somebody uh, who's been delegated by the, uh, the the study director, and they're called a principal investigator in OECD. Now that might yeah, be a totally, little bit it, confusing. Ex exactly what you're saying now is what our company does, and I just right. don't think I was understanding the question because as soon as you said that light bulb, everything makes sense. That's exactly what we do at our company. We right. have principal investigators who are acting on behalf of the study director um, right. to oversee that phase or that portion of that. I always, when I train people, I try to tell them, think of it as like a big puzzle. And we're only doing like a piece of that puzzle. Um, our, our contributing report is going to that final um, report to that study director that's done by right. our principal investigator. Right. I think that's there, there's a bit of confusion sometimes because a lot of research facilities will use principal investigator as a term for doing any kind of uh, for running any kind of study. Right. Uh, whereas in the OECD. So sometimes that 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 definition of principal investigator will be used by uh, an FDA or an EPA GLP faci uh, facility, right? Uh, so whereas... our principal investigators actually, and you know, they actually sign a form, okay. um, you know, provided by um, the test site. Um, they're signing a form to act on behalf of that study direct. I, I think we did bring up principal investigators in the last um, session, 
because I think there was confusion. Yeah. Um, is that term used interchangeably between FDA, um, I mean, GLP and OECD or is, so, I, for me, you, I think there's some, some confusion there. Right. If you're, if you're working on an OECD study, then the term principal investigator is defined in the OECDs and only has that one definition. So, uh, so, so principal investigator in OECD means it's somebody running a phase of the study at a separate location from the test facility. And okay. they're running that phase uh, under Basically, they've been delegated Correct. Okay. by the study director. Importantly, though, is that the study director always retains their control of the study as the sin single point of control, right? So even though you have a PI taking on a particular phase of the study, the study director still needs to be looped in uh, into the discussions and uh, and retain that single point. Of Correct. Because I think, you know, anytime there's a deviation, they need to the study director needs to be acknowledged anytime. I mean, needs to they need to be notified. They need to be like you're saying, kept in the loop of everything that's going on. Right. Right. Very good. Okay, so we've got a couple more discussion questions in here, but I'm seeing where we've uh, we've had some great discussion, and uh, but we're getting close to the end of our time. So I'd like to at least move on to a a, a sample exam question, um, if everybody's okay with that. Okay, so. Sample exam question number one. A sponsor company conducts a field efficacy study. The study personnel, so field efficacy, that's going to give us a clue right away, right? The study personnel arrive for the experimental start and the QAU arrives for the in-life audit. All required equipment is shipped to the site to coincide with the testing. The GLP balance required for weighing test substance arrives at the field site damaged beyond repair. At the same time, a second working non-GLP qualified balance arrives safely, intended to be used for development work. What should the QA recommend? Select one. So uh, now looking at the selections, we've got A, the study director proceeds with the study, performing a daily calibration of the working balance using GLP certified weights with proper back bracketing. B, which is basically the same, except document they also document the use of the unqualified balance as a GLP and a protocol deviation in the raw data and brings the deviation forward on the compliance page of the final report. C, the study director amends the protocol to include the use of a non-GLP balance. And D, the study director proceeds with the study, but documents the lack of using a GLP qualified balance as a deviation in the raw data on the compliance page of the final report and includes an impact statement. So any thoughts? Ashton, you say B. Yeah, that seems to be the, that's certainly the most conservative uh, version of any of the answers, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I feel it encompasses all, all the necessary. And Rebecca, pieces. you say D. What, what, uh, what makes you uh, lean towards D then? Anybody else? Uh, B. B, okay. Yes, I go with B. All right. So I think a lot of people have 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 chosen B. Um, I, you know, I think you're right. I mean, obviously, the answer is B here. Um, the 
the answer here, it says to uh, refer to the US EPA GLPs, uh, 160.61 for the correct answer. Equipment design, equipment used for the generation, measurement, or assessment of data shall be of appropriate design and adequate capacity to function according to, to this. This question for me raises a whole bunch of other questions. First of all, there's some really interesting wording here, you know, talking about GLP certified things um, and, uh, and, and, and study and uh, test substance and, uh, you know, things like that tend to open up a lot of other questions. But I think for the purposes of the exam, you know, what B assumes here is A, is that uh, it's a protocol deviation. So uh, so that means that the protocol must have called for the use of something that the facility calls a GLP balance um, versus the non-GLP balance that was used. It uh, B also gives us what else does it give us? It gives us a, a, a bracketing, a, you know, some kind of corrective action to ensure that uh, we're, we're using equipment of the appropriate design and capacity and is functioning, functioning okay. And I think that's the big difference between B and D, right? Is that uh, in, in B, we actually have some kind of a corrective action. And then they do bring it forward uh, on the compliance page because it's also a, a it's a GLP uh, nonconformance, supposedly. Any comments or questions about this? We've got another principal investigator uh, 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 question here. I don't know if you guys are uh, tired of uh, of talking about this. Oh, no, in, uh, sorry, Rebecca, I missed your question. In Is the calibration to help meet 10, uh, 16063 as well? Yes, I, I, I believe, again, it's, uh, it's, the wording of the the wording of the question is uh, is a little bit strange, um, but I think the 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 calibration here is to show that the uh, because we don't know what the difference between a non qualified non GLP qualified balance and a GLP qualified balance is right. We don't know if this uh, we don't really get, have any clues as to whether the non GLP qualified balance actually ha has calibration uh, uh, certificates. We don't really know if it's just a matter of not having, you know, the maintenance history recorded or or what it is about that balance. And so we've gone with the most conservative and said, yes, we're going to make sure that they put in place something to show that it is uh, that it is it is suitable for its operation. So bracketing the uh, the, the the balances uh, results is uh, one way of doing that. Okay, sorry, sample exam question three. Principal investigator is responsible for A, ensuring that their delegated phase is conducted in accordance with the apl applicable principles of good law authority practice. And uh, we have at least two who've uh, chosen A as their answer. Conducting process-based uh, inspections for their delegated phase of the study. Approving the study plan amendments, deviations, and final report in place of the study director, and D, ensuring that the sufficient number of qualified personnel, appropriate facilities, equipment, and and so on. And everybody, I think, uh, appropriately chose A. And so in this case, I think this is a good example of one where it's really easy to eliminate all the others, right? So who's in, in charge of B? Anybody who's who would be in charge of uh, uh, who would be responsible for conducting process-based in inspections? The QIU. 
Right, right. the QAU. And, and for that delegated phase, it would be the QAU at that test site, right? Mm -hmm. Again, C would be the study director. We already know that that the PI does not replace the study director and D would be test site management. Right. Ability management. Yep. Very good. All right. See, we've got this. All right. Which of the following is required to be listed in a protocol for a non-clinical study? Animal welfare statement table of contents, client identification number, or a statement of the purpose of the study? D. D, yes, very good. <laughs> Again, by elimination, I think we can pretty, that's, that's pretty easy. And we've got three minutes left. I skipped over question two. Uh, in conducting a study audit, the study records should be reviewed for quality to ensure that data are attributable, legible, contemporaneous, original, and in addition, which of the following is the most important characteristic of study records? Accuracy. D. Yeah. The A in Alcoa, right? Okay. Very good. Excellent. Do we have any further questions from from people for this week as we and wrap this, this will up. be this will this session will be added to sqa right or sent to us we'll have access to this <clears throat> session right it's being recorded so i assume okay. it will be just like the other ones so going okay. forward i mean i know i personally i like the the questions um are we going to keep seeing that going forward like the example questions Absolutely. I like seeing, you know, the different options because I think it really does make you think. Um, so yeah, I, I know if we if they're gonna continue going forward, I know for me, I like that. I don't know if others do. <laughs> okay, that's good feedback. I'll keep that uh, I'll I'll uh, keep that in mind. Thank you. Great. Okay, well, thank you everybody. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll yeah. see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.